afternoon all. Thanks for having me here today. Um, I'm Jack Bernard, founder of 913, a digital building management solution dedicated to our sector, the affordable housing sector. Um, quick introduction about myself. I've been in slash around social housing now all of my life. I grew up in it and I've now worked in it for the majority of my career. Let me just minimise these faces. Huh? Um, worked in it for the majority of my career. And over those years, there's been one sort of constant for me that's really stood out. Um, and that is the, the growing need to do more and more and more with less. And ultimately, it's that that led to the creation of 913. So um, some of you might be familiar with the tale of the two shoe salesmen that were sent to Africa in the early 1900s to explore opportunities for selling shoes. Now, they both wrote uh, telegrams back to Manchester to sort of report on their mission. And the first wrote back to say, situation hopeless, they don't wear shoes, stop. And the second wrote back to say, glorious opportunity, they don't wear shoes. Now, for me, other than being sort of a bit of an amusing little tale, this really drums home the point about perspective. And that really resonates for me with our sector, um, especially at the moment. And that we're an amazing sector, I think, that does amazing things for people and for society and things, but we're facing some of the biggest challenges, it feels like, that we really probably ever have. New regulation, legislation and things, um, obviously net zero that was kindly touched on previously, but building safety act and, and all sorts seems to be coming out left, right and centre. But also, I think society has sort of fundamentally changed really over recent years and customer expectation has kind of gone through the roof and rightly so I'll add not not sort of in in a wrong way um and really I think customers are sort of expecting that we do better these days now relating this to my shoe salesman story I think we can either see this as a bit of a hopeless opportunity like our first shoe salesman and really sort of concede that we're never really going to be able to meet those demands and expectations or we can see it as an opportunity, an opportunity to sort of reshape really how we do things, rethink how we do things and really shape the sector going forward. So that then begs the question, should we do better? So if I was to ask questions to sort of the room, if you like, um, such as how many fire alarm systems have you got across your portfolio at the moment in fault and potentially not going to sort of do their job in the event of an emergency? Or how many leaks have you got potentially going to come crashing through ceilings and whatnot? Or lifts out, how many lifts are out? Or energy consumption, which buildings are consuming the most energy in relation to how many people are in them or certain times of the day and things? Or even just KPI reports. If we were to, to sort of need to pull our KPI reports now, really sort of middle of the month, would we be able to easily do that? And the reason I sort of ask these questions is typically, I think we struggle to answer these or and quite often we just can't answer these in terms of monitoring and things in real time. And I think for me, and I think for society these days, that's fundamentally not good enough. And I, I mean, we can be 100% compliant across all of our um, sort of regulatory et cetera, requirements and not be able to answer these questions, not need to answer these questions about do things actually work? And as I say, I think for me, that's just not good enough. Lives have been lost and unfortunately will be lost because we can't answer these questions. Now, obviously, it's not that easy to be able to and things. So I've spent myself, spent a couple of years um, trying to source solutions in various roles to do these sorts of things. And I found that, you know, traditional BMS systems, traditional monitoring systems and things, just aren't particularly suited to our sector. They're usually not designed for our sector um, and they're quite often not able to do kind of everything. So they add to the problem of multiple systems and things. And talking of multiple systems internally, I think we're quite um, sort of known for, certainly internally, and, you know, we're known for having quite a few systems in an organization to manage operations. Quite often they don't talk to each other as well as they should. And often as well, the reporting side of things isn't ideal or at least it's not perfectly suited to the, the organisation, so we're forever pulling data out of it, manipulating it and things just to present it in a certain format. So the solution then, the solution uh, for me, I believe, is digital building management. So 913 is a digital building management solution that brings together remote monitoring and holistic analytics into one bespoke and modular solution. We focus on existing buildings because, of course, that's the majority of what we've got in affordable housing. And as well, we focus on the buildings rather than the dwellings. Dwellings, of course, are included, but I believe 
blocks as as it's quite often called are often overlooked when we talk about a lot of stuff in in housing um we focus on simple insight as well that actually empowers action and enables action so we try not to overcomplicate things we use internet of things for uh, our monitoring um it's so well suited to the task and the way we use it is quite unique as well so it enables us or allows us to monitor any asset in any system um any building etc and we can quite confidently say that as well and then what's key with us is that we then pull the monitoring data um, up into a dedicated analytics platform. And that then enables us to integrate data from any other system. So our compliance system, property system, asset, et cetera, repairs, even contractor systems from outside of our organization. We can put all of that in to the, to the one system. So now that gives us, of course, one, it's like one stop shop to see all of our data have instant access to it in bespoke ways, et cetera, for, for all the stakeholders across the business. And as well, key, it, it means that we actually know what's going on in our buildings. We know if systems are working or not in real time. So all those questions that, frankly, I think we should be able to answer, but also I think that society and our customers and things are expecting us to be able to answer, we can now answer. Oh. So the minute, let's me click. So the, the benefits and of digital building management um, they sit across three key areas. So safety and assurance, first and foremost, just by knowing what's going on in our buildings, obviously means that we're going to be able to make them a lot safer for people. So there's over 2,000 hours, which is a bit a stat that sort of stands out for me. There's over 2,000 hours between some of the most frequent safety checks we do on systems. So, for instance, quarterly fire door checks every three months, um, over 2,000 hours between checks. That's 2,000 hours where we are left to assume and hope that the system or the asset etc is, is going to work and, and is safe etc i'm going to save lives in the event of an emergency well digital building management removes every single one of those hours because we're not assuming anything anymore we're monitoring in real time efficiency so again by bringing everything into one place and having it in sort of available if you like in real time all data um, bespoke to the needs of the users etc across the business obviously drastically is going to increase efficiencies reduce costs but I think as well for me, it's going to it's going to a it's going to increase morale. I think with teams, I think people generally speaking don't necessarily enjoy dragging data about from spreadsheet to spreadsheet. But it's also going to free up teams' time and give time back to teams to be more proactive in other areas and things that I think people generally want to do. Um, and then sustainability. So of course, by monitoring things again in real time, actually seeing energy usage and carbon footprints and things in real time. It's going to enable us aid to direct investments within much smarter ways based on actual data. But it's also going to allow us to see sort of energy wastage, if you like, and usage, but wastage again in real time and make some kind of easy decisions to, to save, uh, save on uh, wastage. So the journey to uh, to this sort of future, if you like, to digital building management, the journey with us is a four stage journey. Stage one is all about getting to know each other. So get to know you, your buildings, your portfolio and things your teams and all of that and your systems. Um, there's no there's no sort of like minimum requirement for this. I think coming from housing, I'm very aware that we don't always have all the data we'd like or the, all the asset information and things like that. So there's no really minimum requirement. Um, there's even no need to survey buildings with with this system. Um, an address will do, to be honest, but of course, the more, the more information, the better. Stage two, scope and design. So we'll go away and actually design dashboards, design the systems and things like that. We ideally will do that in collaboration with your teams in terms of the dashboards and things. But again, don't need to. We can give something sort of off the shelf and we can develop it as we go. Stage three, install and connect. So the beauty of IoT technology is that it's all wireless with really long battery lives and things like that. So that's a fast stage. So a sort of seven story building, you're talking sort of two, three, four days to install other than the weeks and weeks that a traditional BMS system would be. Um, and also buildings, I should say, are live. As soon as we walk out, they are connected and, and live in the dashboards. And then stage four, develop and adapt. This really represents the lifetime of the relationship, if you like, and the partnership. So we continuously will be developing it, working with your teams and things and tweaking things. I think a big problem we have in the sector is systems that don't effectively don't do that. We're sort of sold, if you like, systems, um, and then you can't tweak it and can't sort of um, adapt it as we go. Whereas with us, very much, you know, we'll focus on developing, adapting, and working with your teams throughout, uh, throughout the, the partnership. And that is me. Hopefully I didn't run too far over time, Jenny. No, it's perfect, thank you. Stop my sharing, there we go.
Thank you. No, a really, really interesting and an area that I feel very passionately about that whole <laughs> element of making the invisible visible and we fool ourselves into feeling very lucky that um, well, we are lucky as opposed to actually really knowing what's, what's happening. So, um, yeah, interesting. Um, again, thoughts from anybody else would be good. I'm I'm keen to know um, really around the one question I get asked a lot actually is around that future proof. And if I go now, something will change in six months' time, and actually it will be, yeah. um, you know, it 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 will be out of date. What what's yeah. your what's your answer to that? So, so it's it's our sort of modular approach. So I, I couldn't agree more. And I've seen it. I think we probably all have in house, and we've seen it. The new shiny system that then sits on the shelf gathering dust, sort of six months later, because something else has come out. So, so for us, we've we've I suppose we factored it in in our modular approach. So every part of our system is an independent part designed to do its job. So our front end, if you like, the customer seat, is an analytics platform purely to do analytics but also that can integrate anything from anywhere effectively so i suppose what that means is if a customer you know if their crm system or something if they're looking at upgrading that you know we can link in their api in if you like their current one when that's replaced with just api in the new one it's it's not you know it's not um reliant on any particular system and same with our if you like monitoring side of it we bring all of that up if you like through our stack for one of a better phrase um, and it enables us, each each part of it enables us to incorporate anything. So whilst we use predominantly Law One IoT, we are able to use, you know, anything else, I, even though I sort of effectively uh, um, talk, talk down of BMS systems, you know, we can integrate BMS systems as well. So it's that sort of modular approach and, and really factoring in the fact that technology changes. So we are able to change and adapt over time with that. And your your view on the on this sort of digital building then is really any anything that you would go about checking or want to know from uh, i don't know lifts through to fire extinguishers fire doors yeah um... yeah so 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 my my background uh, has been and sort of is really in in maintenance and compliance and sort of fire safety and things like that so uh, one of the i suppose things that also sort of fed into the creation of this is that managing fire i was managing fire safety for an organization fifty five thousand homes three and a half thousand blocks and i found out on more than one occasion that there'd been a fire in a building and i found that out through either twitter or a resident or something like that and it it just you know it sent shivers down my spine that as head of fire safety the person that should know what's going on i had no idea that a fire occurred because we don't need to, which sounds crazy. We don't need to know technically, you know, in, in the eyes of, I suppose, the law. And that just didn't sit right with me. So I think for me, there's a massive gap between, I think you touched on it, Jenny, in fact, in terms of it's that sort of shining a light on what we don't know. You know, there's a big gap between, you know, really what we should know in terms of what's going on in our buildings. So like you say, you know, if a lift is working or not, if a fire alarm system is working or not, if a fire door is actually closing and working or not, if the close is working. And then, you know, energy supplies as well. You know, there's a lot of, I think, I say simple, of course, it's incredibly clever tech and things, but there's a lot of simple stuff that we can monitor and really change our approach really, to how we manage buildings and sort of things. So hence the phrase that we're sort of coining this digital building management phrase. And can the um, can the solution be shared with um, external stakeholders? So if we send it on the fire theme, thinking about the fire service or, or others? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. So, of course, it's up to the organization ultimately because it's their data but yeah so um there is there's a i suppose a thing there's a thing called property information boxes or secure information boxes which um basically red secure boxes outside tool buildings that has emergency information in for the fire service now this is something that is incredibly important but fundamentally flawed and it has always been because we as providers, if you like, you know, we print off information about who's vulnerable in the building and things like that, and we put it in a box. And then if, God forbid, you know, the, the building catches fire, the fire service have it. Well, of course, the minute we print information, it's out of date. So we've built what we call a digital SIB, digital secure information box. So again, because we can, because we take that modular approach and bring everything into our analytics platform, it enables us to build effectively dashboards for anyone that needs it. So we use the same information and present it differently. So the fire service can go up to the building, scan a QR code, go straight into their dashboard, which shows them in real time how many fire doors are propped open, so whether smoke's you know circulating through the building, etc. You know, linking into the CRM system, it shows them that flat forty three has somebody in a wheelchair. You know, did it. So absolutely is is the the answer, I suppose. <laughs> Brilliant. 
Mm -hmm. um, that's it's great, Jack. I, I think well, we we've got no choice, have we? We need to be moving forward. With this, really, I don't. We can't we can't do it any other way, really, and, and carry on to um, to manage manage buildings and continue to be lucky. Uh, yeah. Look, unfortunately, we'll run out, and, and people could well die as a result of it. Yeah. Sadly, yeah.